up, everybody? It is your boy Bear Dog here with another New York Giants video. As always, thank you for watching. I really do appreciate it. Hope everybody's weekend is going great. It is Saturday. Uh, I'll be live with Chris for Talking Giants tonight on his channel, probably around 10 o'clock, not really sure. Uh, but, you know, 9.45, 10 o'clock, somewhere in that area. Hopefully you guys can tune in for that. We'll talk about Giants training camp, what's gone on so far. We'll be expecting to see in the future. It's good to have the boys back in camp. They put the pads on on Monday, so we'll see how that goes. But I want to talk about a few things that have happened so far. Kadarius Tony, man, it's it's encouraging to hear that he has had a really good uh, first few days in camp. He's been healthy. He's looked fresh. He's been explosive. Looking really good. Didn't practice today. Just kind of a maintenance day. But he's logged a lot of reps over the first three days, which is a lot better than he did his rookie year. Remember, he's coming off knee surgery, so you want to take it easy with Kadarius Tony. We don't want to blow him up in training camp and not have him available for the regular season. But it does look like he's enjoying Brian Dable's wide-open system. And hopefully, again, this translates – uh, into the regular season now you never really know I, I i always say training camp with a grain of salt then maybe it's me you know i people say you're pessimistic bad dog i like to think i'm realistic but you know when it comes to the giants yeah i will admit they've made me a bit pessimistic over the last five years we haven't been a good team so when a guy does really good in training camp i'm always skeptical of um yeah you know, how good is he going to be when it really matters? How is he good is he going to be against coverages? How good is he going to be, you know, in this and in that? And then when the guy's bad, I'm like, God, if you can't get it together in training camp, how the hell are you ever going to get it together when the games actually count when you're going against a real defense that's trying to stop you? Not that the defense, you know, not that they don't try to stop each other in preseason in camp, but you know what I'm saying? You can't, you're not going to blitz. You're, you're not going to bang at each other. You're not going to knock each other out. You know what I mean? You're, you're not trying to kill each other on the field. You're just trying to defend them as opposed to when the games count. Obviously, the other team's goal is to smash you into oblivion, which is why we love football, right? Because of the contact, because of the hard hitting. So it is good to hear Kadarius Tony is having a good training camp, a good first week. Let's hope it continues. Let's hope he can continue to build on it because a lot of experts have said he would be the X factor for the Giants this year. Obviously, the first round pick last year, last first round pick Dave Gettleman made for this team. And uh, we're going to need him to be an offensive superstar. There is no doubt about it. Uh, first fight happened today uh, between Shane Lemieux and Dexter Lawrence. I guess Dexter Lawrence blew him up. At least they think it was Shane Lemieux. Nobody really had an idea, but I think it was those two guys. Dexter Lawrence blew him up off the line. We had a good skirmish. Nothing to write into. You're always going to have fights in camp. Always. I don't think it's as, it certainly wasn't as ugly as the one they had last year. And according to my knowledge, Coach Dable did not have them run laps after um the fight i don't think he had them running wind sprints until they passed out i don't think that that's what the case was i don't think that brian dable put on the clown makeup and the wig and said run laps so i don't think we had to worry about that there's going to be fights in training camp it's hot guys don't like training camp it's hard you get back into football shape man you're tired and it's not fun it's not fun it's grueling training camp is grueling because these guys have got to get into shape so you're going to be pressed hard and like i said it's 90 degrees 95 degrees and tempers are going to flare it's good as healthy competition you kind of like to see a fight in training camp you don't want anybody to get hurt but you like to see the guys getting pissed off at one another not liking it not taking it and fighting back you kind of like that every team has fights it's just the way it goes so i'm not going to write too much into that um Xavier McKinney's been really good too. They're talking about Xavier McKinney maybe being the leader of the defense in year three. That's the next jersey I'm buying. I definitely want a cave on Thibodeau jersey. I am I am definitely um maybe tonight or tomorrow. I'm definitely buying an Xavier McKinney throwback blue. I mean that's that's why Xavier McKinney's the man. I and you guys know me. I, I played secondary in high school. I wasn't very good, but that was the position I played. I've always loved uh, the second of the safeties in the corners. And and I, I loved the McKinney draft pick. One of the few draft picks Gettleman made that I really liked and I think will pan out for the Giants. But he's like really good. And they're talking about when Blake Martinez was off the field, how McKinney was calling the plays. And this is probably going to be Xavier McKinney's defense. And obviously, Wink Martindale has a ton of confidence in the third-year pro out of Alabama. So I like to hear that, though. I like to hear that the young guys take in charge. And 
I think McKinney could take that next step up. He had a great year last year, and I think he's a superstar to make it. Now, maybe that's me being a little bit too much optimistic and thinking with my heart on my head, but I do think McKinney's a good player, and I, I do think that the future's bright for him. Hopefully, this isn't a bad take. Hopefully, somebody doesn't come back to me at the end of the day and go, well, boy, bad dog, that was a bad take about McKinney. Let's hope not. Um, so, you know, that's that. Now, I, I got to get into the bad. The bad. That's Daniel Jones. Been bad. I, I, don't know, I don't know what else to say. No, you just hate Daniel Jones. Like, I don't hate Daniel Jones. I don't. I, I don't like Josh Johnson. Like, I hated Gary Sanchez, right? I don't like Aaron Hicks. They're Yankees. But I don't know if there's a giant that I look at and go, I don't like him. Um, Daniel Jones just, I got no confidence. I don't know what else to say. Three days in a row, he threw three picks to Darnay Holmes, stared down receiver. Holmes took it for, to the house for a pick six. Oh, but he's under a new system. He's got to get used to this. I mean, how many excuses are we going to hear for this guy? Like, I'm so sick of the excuses. You know, it's early in training camp. So what? You know, he was 15 out of 22 yesterday. And they're, they even everybody that wrote about it said, don't even read into the numbers because it was a very uneven, ugly performance. These are guys that are there. That's, that's where I get my information. I'm obviously not there. Not like my man Chris who was there. Shout out to Entertainment Target Sports. They told Chris, don't film any of them. That was a prank. Anyway, I digress. I'm not gonna, we'll talk about that later tonight. But he hasn't been good. And I get concerned. And I get sick and tired of the excuses. And I'll go back to the Yankees again. Because I'm watching the documentary on Derek Jeter. Right? Yankee fans, I'm sure you're watching that. Um, baseball fans, I'm sure you're watching the captain uh, on ESPN. One of the few good things ESPN's done here recently, but I'm enjoying it. And one thing Jeter talked about is I'm not making excuses. I'm not making excuses. He didn't make excuses. Winners don't make excuses. They just don't. They don't blame other people. They just say, it's my fault. I got to get better. And they work on themselves. As soon as you start blaming others for your failures, you are failing to work on yourself and make yourself better because like, that's not my fault. That's their fault. I don't give a damn if it is somebody else's fault. You still need to work on yourself. Daniel Jones, this is his fourth year in the league. How long are we going to wait? Now, there's one NFL expert didn't say who it was. So this is definitely Daniel Jones's last year. With the Giants, he's not a good quarterback, and he'll be a backup someplace. Now, I'm not going to go that far and say he's going to be a backup someplace, and I'm not going to go as far as to say that the guy can't have a good year. But I'm going to tell you this. He's off to a bad start, and again, people go, you just hate Daniel Jones. You did the That's not the case. I just call it the way I see it. I say that all the time. This is the way it is. Now, in two weeks, this first day he was pretty good. He still had an uneven performance. They made it seem like he was a lot better, but he has not been good. Okay. Now, in two weeks, this could definitely change. Maybe he turns it around. Maybe he figures out Dable's system. Maybe all of a sudden, he's Danny Dimes again. Maybe that's the case. Maybe when he gets into the regular season, he figures it out, and the Giants figure it out, and he's really good. Let's, let's hope that's what happens. But right now, as we speak, on July 30th of 2022, and four days into training camp, he doesn't look good. He looks confused. He looks hesitant in the pocket, which again, we've been through Shermer. We've been through Judge. We've been through God knows how many offensive coordinators. And now Dable and the same problems keep rearing their ugly head, hesitant in the pocket, unwilling to just throw the ball, staring down receivers. This isn't a system thing. This is a six inches of gray matter between the ears thing with Daniel Jones. That is hard to change. I don't know if you can change that. When you have instincts, inevitably, you will revert back to your instincts. It just happens. That's why some guys have what they call the it factor because they just, Jeter had that. Jeter knew how to rise to the occasion. Was Jeter the best player on the field half the time? No. But when it mattered most, when the lights shine brightest, was Jeter there to step up his game? Absolutely. Now, Daniel Jones doesn't need to be the best quarterback in the league, but he needs to step his game up. So I get concerned when, again, this is his fourth year in the league and, oh, he's got to learn a new system. Well, I don't understand. I, I just I have a hard time understanding it because, again, I don't think that's a system thing. I don't think the hesitancy in the pocket, the staring down the receivers, the making poor decisions and throwing the interceptions, I don't think that that has to do with Dable's system. Now, I will say this about yesterday. They put the Giants in third and long. That was the situation. Obviously, when you're third and long, the offense is at a disadvantage. So if you want to say don't read too much into that bad dog, it's fine because 
Third and long is tough for any offense, and not just the Giants. If you're third and 14, there is no, oh God, they might bust a run here, and if they do run, it's kind of a give-up play. But on third and 14, defenses are pinning their ears back, and they're going after the quarterback. So you don't want to be in that situation. But the Giants got to get better at that, and they got to get better at every other situation because his offense has not been good, and Daniel Jones, like it or not, is the head of the offense. He's the quarterback. So let's stop, stop making excuses for the guy. He needs to step up, plain and simple, because if he can't get this together in training camp, then I have serious doubts that he's going to get it together when this actually matters. So let's hope he figures it out, man. And I know, oh, you just want to bash Daniel Jones. No, I wish I was coming out here saying Daniel Jones looked amazing. The first training camp video I did, I said how good he looked. He threw a lot of good passes. He didn't throw the best pass, but he threw, he threw good passes. He looked pretty good outside of the interceptions. He keeps throwing interceptions in the red zone. We can't have that. But he looked pretty good the first day, but he hasn't looked good since. Again, I'm just telling you what I read, what I hear, what I see. That's it. That's all this is. It's not a Daniel Jones bashing session. How about Daniel Jones plays better and you won't get these videos? I mean, it's really what it is. Play better, Daniel. I know you watch. I know you all watching, right? Right, Chris? They watch. <laughs> Whatever. I guess we'll talk about that later tonight. Anyways, 11 minutes. You guys enjoy the rest of your Saturday. Tune in for Talking Giants tonight. It'll be on the Entertainment Talking Sports this channel. Like I said, probably 9 45, 10 o'clock. I'm going to get out of here, go to the pool. And yes, it is um, my day where I can eat whatever the hell I want for dinner and dessert. And probably going to have some pizza and some ice cream because I just want some damn ice cream or cake or something. Anyway, it's a bad day. It is. I'll enjoy the rest of your weekend. Hopefully, I see you tonight. We out, or I'm out. <laughs> Peace. Peace. What am I doing?